escaping the realm of darkness. The paranormal guys are on a quest to find the answers to the hard questions of where the normal meets the paranormal and the weird and where the natural meets the unnatural. So grab your holy water, call your mama, and get ready for the Paranormal Guys podcast. So today's date is 3-18-2023. One day after St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day to Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Everybody have their green beer? Yeah. yeah. Irish whiskey. Irish whiskey. All right. That's very, very good. All right. My name is Neil Gibbons. Like I said, this is Steve Linewarber. We are the Paranormal Guys podcast. Our uh, parent company is Graveside Paranormal. We do ghost tours throughout the Chicagoland area. We also do investigations throughout the Chicagoland area, and wherever we get emails to, we usually go to their house. We do not charge any money to do any investigations whatsoever. If you have a problem or anything going on in your residence or your business, we are more than happy to help you out. That's what we do. That's how we roll. That's how we get down. All right, so once again, this is the Paranormal Guys podcast, and today we're going to talk about shadow people. But before we get started, we always start off with the news. So I'll start the first one, Steve. Go ahead. You ready for that? I'm ready for the news. Ready for the news? Let's do some weird news. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is actually breaking news today. I was able to get it. Breaking news in a shocking twist of events. Bob Anderson of the Bob After Dark radio show has been discovered to be none other than the mysterious Mothman. He was sighted in Michigan City, Indiana. The discovery was made by a group of amateur sleuths who were investigating reports of strange sightings in the area. They stumbled upon Bob Anderson in a rather peculiar situation. He was perched on a tree branch wearing a moth costume and flapping his wings furiously. Really, Bob? (laughs) At first, the sleuths thought they had stumbled upon a prankster, but upon closer inspection, they realized that the costume was too intricate and lifelike to be a cheap Halloween costume. It was then that they realized that they had uncovered a shocking truth. Bob Anderson of Bob After Dark was the mysterious Mothman. The news of Bob's double life quickly spread like wildfire right now. Oh, (laughs) jeez. And the citizens of Michigan City were stunned. Many were left scratching their heads, wondering how they had never noticed the resemblance between Bob and the Mothman before. Hmm. The news of Bob being discovered quickly made its way to the airwaves tonight on the Paranormal Guys podcast, live at Sip of Coffee 2, which we totally appreciate hanging out with Bob. Now, his loyal listeners, we are sure, like his loyal listeners, we are sure will be left in a state of disbelief. The discovery of Bob Anderson as the mysterious Mothman may have left the citizens of Michigan City scratching their heads, but it was certainly brought a much-needed dose of humor and excitement to the town. Who knows what other secrets Bob may have lurking just beneath the surface. One thing is for sure, Bob After Dark just got a whole lot more interesting. Boo. <laughs> wow, Nice guys. story. Who, uh, what publication was that in? Yeah, I was going to ask who. That who, was Neil Gibbons Incorporated. <laughs> oh, you have your own news now? I got my own news you got your own new, So who tipped you off on that, Neil? Well, I can't. That's why we said they're sleuths. You know, we didn't want to because we didn't want you to you know, go out there and you know, Go attack them at night or anything. Were you like, I would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for you damn kids? <laughs> you damn kids. <laughs> what you know, I, uh, I can't confirm nor deny that I am the Mothman. Um, that's, <laughs> now you're just blowing my secret to everybody, Neil. Thanks. Hey, no problem. That's what I'm here for. Help others. <laughs> so, Steve, what kind of news do you have today before we start our broadcast? Neil's Batman. I am Batman. Yes. Oh, geez. Yeah, I didn't know if anybody knew that. No. no, seriously. I have real news. Oh, do you? Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't By the way, news. ladies and gentlemen, this segment is called Truth or Boo Shizzy. So you tell us at the end, do you think the first story I told you was truth or boo shizzy? Boo shizzy. Steve's going to tell you a story, and then at the end, you tell us, is it truth or boo shizzy? All right. So my news comes from the U.S. Sun. Very, very reputable. Uh-huh. Um, the Neil Network. Yeah. AI gods and chat GPT religions are coming. And they will be better than human priests, and they could turn evil, warn experts. Intelligent AI robots are coming, and they will have the ability to perform religious ceremonies, and they could turn against you. As AI becomes more prominent in our day-to-day lives, it wasn't going to be long before the worlds of religion and tech merged. They both want your money and to control you. Wesley Wildman is the professor of uh, philosophy, theology, and ethics and of computing and data sciences at Boston University. And he told The Sun that he believes AI will soon be able to perform religious duties even better than human priests. 
He goes on to say, you can confide in it. I wouldn't. You can ad get advice from it. No, thanks. And learn to trust it to help you figure out complicated moral and spiritual situations. Even the Vatican is cautiously encouraging apps, which may assist with a confession online. But the sacrament must be carried out person to person. That's P to P for you techies. Uh, but use of AI does not come without its own risk and dangers. Wildman says that just as human religious leaders may manipulate people, AI chatbots can be trained by their creators to do the same. What could go wrong? So that brings forth... Did you want to say something, Bob? That's absolutely terrifying. I don't know. I, I don't like AI. I don't, it's just, you know, have you ever seen Terminator? Oh, yeah. So now we're, we're just getting closer and closer to Skynet every day. Now I could I like, agree. confess I my, skins to, my sins to, you know, I'm just Skynet. glad my name's not Sarah Connor. That would be, that would be terrible. Then, <laughs> Sarah Connor. Would Neil be, uh, what's his name, the kid? Uh, oh, John Connor? Yeah, would Neil be John Connor in that situation? <laughs> Maybe. You yeah. never know. <laughs> Can you imagine the fate of our lives and the human race rest in Neil? Oh, dear Lord in heaven. I mean, <laughs> be right. him breaking glorious news stories like the first one, I guess he'd be, the, uh, <laughs> you I, know, we, be just fine. We need the Mothman in that fight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Neil saved by the Mothman, Bob Anderson. <laughs> I'm, I'm not Mothman. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, what I need everybody to do at this time, as usually always you do, you should have your phone in your hand. I need everybody to go to Facebook if you are on Facebook because we are going to show you proof of shadow people today. As well as I've already downloaded where it was supposed to go off at 6 o'clock. Go to Graveside, G-R-A-V-E-S-I-D-E, paranormal.com. I've already preloaded on there for you, and I'm going to pull it up on mine, where you're going to be able to see what I have out there. But first, let's talk about shadow people, Bob and Steve. Yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes. So how many people have ever seen a thing called the Hat Man? Oh, yeah, man. Anybody ever seen the hat man? I have. You have seen the hat man? Where have you seen the hat man? Uh, my bedroom, actually. In your bedroom? I swear, yeah. 100%. Oh, I believe you. I woke up and I uh, had to will it away 100%. Now, did you get paralyzed? Yes. All right. I woke up and tried to wiggle my way uh, wiggle my way out of it. Mm -hmm. And eventually, it just, I was like, listen, if I get up, you're, I'm going to be very mad. Yeah. And it eventually left me alone. Right, right. Yeah. Did you have a sense of uh, fear and dread? Uh, at happens. first, yes, and then I just became more and more upset. <laughs> okay. It was more annoying than anything. Right. Now, the hat man syndrome, which happens to a lot of people, is actually also is part of a thing called hag syndrome. Has anybody ever heard of hag syndrome? Hag syndrome is a syndrome. It's also sleep paralysis, which is actually a natural thing that's inside your body. It's each and every one of our bodies. Where the sleep paralysis, the scientific part of sleep paralysis that happens, is that your body actually goes to sleep and it gets paralyzed. The reason why is because when we have nightmares or anything like that, we don't act them out in our sleep. So sometimes we believe that something enters into the room like Bob did. He felt it come inside the room. Am I, am I correct, Bob? Yes. Enter I your room. Literally peered around the corner too. Correct. Yep. Sometimes what it is, it's probably sleep paralysis, but there's a lot of cases of this hat man known as a shadow person that enters inside the room. You feel... This shadow come inside the room, you feel it. Even though your eyes are closed, you feel its presence. As it enters inside the room, you start to become paralyzed. You start to become very nervous. Your heart starts beating just a little bit faster than usual. Then all of a sudden, you start to feel a pressure upon your chest. And when you feel that pressure upon your chest, you're just wishing and hoping and praying that eventually this will end. And like Bob talked about, when these things do happen, either it's a scientific thing that happens, like it's called sleep paralysis, which is actually, like I said, a natural thing that happens in your body, or it could be something that is paranormal or supernatural that does happen, try to will it out by just believing that you want it out of you. And usually sometimes that always helps. Sometimes we think that we see things out of the corner of our eye like a shadow person. Has anybody ever seen that before? You can raise your hand. Get into it. All right. What happens is in our peripheral vision, ladies and gentlemen, we actually see in black and white. I'm not discarding that there's no such thing as shadow people, but I'm just trying to give it a little bit of a breakdown. Someone is sipping on that skeptic juice right off the bat. That's fine. That's fine. Mm, that's okay. I'm not skeptic of shadow because I've seen them. Oh, that's fine. I've seen them and I've felt them. 
Mm-hmm. But I like to at least uh, talk about the whole idea of it. That's fine. Yeah. I'm just picking on you a little bit. That's okay. All good. <laughs> you all picked on me at the beginning. I'm sitting back enjoying that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to ask Bob, Bob, what do you think shadow people are? It depends. Uh, so sometimes I literally just believe um, it's us matrixing a... Uh, something uh, trying to personify something that seems to be attacking us. If we believe, you know, if we're going down the route of like sleep paralysis, I think it's sometimes sleep paralysis might be a paranormal thing. I think a lot of times it's a psychological thing. And I think for us to be able to personify something, it helps us make sense of something. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's just a natural knee jerk reaction to uh, just general like fear. Mm -hmm. So it's why am I feeling like this? What is on top of me? What's choking me? What's, you know, causing me to be paralyzed? What's causing me not to move? You know, we are able to just say, uh yes this thing is a shadow person now on the flip side i know there's the concept of like you know you're at an investigation right and you see one and you're not asleep you're completely awake right. yes uh totally um residual haunting energy there i don't uh, maybe some, i've heard them being intelligent i've never seen one just straight up interact with me before mm-hmm. um residual uh for all of you guys out there in the audience that don't know what a residual haunt means uh residual two kinds of haunts you have a residual which is energy left behind that's you know, repeating, like not necessarily recording. something that you can um, interact with. And then you have an intelligent haunting, which is something you can interact with. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe that a lot of times if you see them in an investigation or even just a place that might be haunted, I believe it's just residual energy left behind. Maybe the thing doesn't have enough juice. So I'll call it that to like physically manifest. That's why we get a shadow. That's my opinion. Right. And it could be many different hauntings. It can go anywhere from, like you said, a residual haunting to actually a poltergeist haunting because these things, they manifest. Okay, and what I like to think is that a uh, shadow person is more of a manifestation. When I say poltergeist, is because someone in that house is manifesting something that's going on inside that house and it's being presented probably through their psyche. Uh, some other manifestations, it does not mean that a shadow person is somebody that is evil or malevolent. It could just be the way it looks at that moment due to environment. If all of a sudden you have a haunting inside of a house that where you're always seeing something to translucent okay, inside that house, but at a certain time of the day, it's all of a sudden taking on a shadow form. It could also still be that uh, shadow person at that time. So you think it could be the same entity showing up as uh, different things Correct. at different times? Correct. I think, uh, and what, what's your take on that, Steve? Uh, my take is um, I think the majority of shadow people uh, encounters aren't paranormal. Mm-hmm. Sorry. No, that's fine. Oh, um, no, I was actually going to ask yeah. you your opinion on it being like, because your background's in yes. you know, mentalists. So. Right. And like you put, um, when I hypnotize people, right. um, initially I have them kind of relax, feel heavy, allow yourself to relax. They get a disassociation from their body and you could tell them that you can try to move. You can't and it's okay. Just relax. And notice if you try to move, you can't move. I can actually create a uh, form of paralysis um, in that hypnagogic state. So, um, and that happens naturally, like Neil said, at nighttime. The reason is, is that uh, you don't act out your dreams. It's a, uh, it's a uh, kind of a genetic uh, trait, evolutionary trait that we have. And, um, and there's some people that actually they have something called REM sleep behavior disorder. Mm-hmm. And they don't have sleep paralysis. They go and they hit their wives and they throw things. Uh, yeah, <laughs> nine one one's called. <laughs> and they call nine. No, they walk around. They they do stuff. Sleepwalking. Yeah, like sleepwalking. Right. Drive driving. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Um, it's dangerous if you don't have that off switch for your body when you go to sleep. Right. So that makes sense. And if you're just waking up suddenly and your body's already in a like sleep paralysis state, mm-hmm. then it's going to linger for a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's just not. It's disheartening when it happens because Mm -hmm. you're in a fearful state and your flight or fight response is kicking in and you can't move. And that creates dread and fear. Right. Okay. The common things with shadow people is that they do see a shadowy figure and it often it's in the shape of a humanoid or often um, some people have like the hat man occur and, uh, a state of fear and dread is associated with it. And, it, and if you're waking up, an association of sleep paralysis. I think that uh, that if you wake up suddenly like that, you're going to have a very scary time. But if you're in a haunted place that sees shadow people, 
or has an experience of shadow people showing up all the time, like you're not going to all of a sudden go into sleep paralysis while you're no. awake, right? But people will get a sense of fear and dread. And so there's a lot of medical um, uh, things that can happen, disorders that can happen, illnesses and diseases where you can have a state of hallucination and you can have a state of anxiety, mm -hmm. all right? Schizophrenia, for one, uh, is a common one. Um, there's uh, probably less common. Like, I wouldn't say most people who see shadow people are schizophrenic, but um, they, there's um, sleep apnea right. um, can cause you to lose sleep, like your sleep pattern is disrupted. So um, that can create issues with waking, mm -hmm. for example. Um, it can also create uh, hallucinations and anxiety. Um, there's PTSD, and who doesn't have that nowadays? <laughs> I think everybody does. Yeah. Uh, that can cause a, uh issue with sleep, like a sleep disorder. Correct. And uh, migraines. There's uh, something called um, cortical spreading uh, disease. Mm -hmm. And that's where there's like an electric uh, charge that goes through the surface of your brain. And it causes your brain to secrete things like serotonin, which is a neurotransmitter, and neuropeptides uh, combined you can have uh, a state of sleep disturbance, which can then turn into uh, basically seeing hallucinations right. and stuff like that. So there's a lot of medical things. There's drugs uh, that there's can a, induce yeah, there's it. there's a lot. There's a lot. Right. There's environmental. There's psychological pareidolia. So I think that when you get called out to investigate a shadow person uh, type of uh, haunting, mm -hmm. what you want to do is you want to not just break out the Anahata box or... You know what I mean? Like break out the You want to break paranormal. down everything that's going on in that house. Like even if like all of a sudden you like yeah. we, we get calls a lot of times to go out to people's houses or businesses to see what's going on. Now it could be something that's environmental that's already happening in your house. Like if you're carbon monoxide, if you have a leak in carbon monoxide, actually people see spots and they make it to believe that those are probably shadow people. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm not I understand. I'm not saying that there isn't shadow people because I'm gonna bring forth evidence of real shadow people to you today. But we like to also talk about what is the scientific thing of what could actually be the reality of why possibly mm -hmm. certain things could be happening to certain people. Go but ahead, I, but I also think that shadow people are a real paranormal phenomenon. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm not trying to uh, say that it can only be that, but we have to take into account things like this. And then the environment. Um, a moth on a chandelier no. can cast a shadow. You yeah. have to look at the environment and the time of day and the season. You know, does the place have insects? You know, does it have bugs right, uh, right, flying right. and crawling around? Uh, there's a lot of skeptical analysis, I think, that has to be put in place when you're investigating. Bob? Yes. No, I completely agree. I, uh, I appreciate you touching on the uh, being asleep and waking up thing, but I was going to bring up to you. It's like, well, what if you're fully awake, right? And yeah. You're in an investigation. You see a straight up thing just peeking around a corner and staring at you. I'm, I'm wide awake and that thing's looking at me, Steve. I don't know. <laughs> oh, you're know, wide man. awake. Yeah. And I'm wide awake. There ain't no, ain't no sleep paralysis when I'm awake. Right. No, but I you agree. were sleeping, right? So that sure. there's a state where your brain is going from REM to awaken. Yeah. And sometimes you get a little bleed over. I get uh, you. hallucination uh, of your dream. It's like when you're dreaming, it's like you're hallucinating everything, right? Yeah, I, you can I get wake you. up into that. Uh, that's terrifying. Man. Yeah. Attention, all lost souls. It's time to get into the shadows with Shell. His voice so low by Shell Ward. Since I was a teen, he's been following me, the hat man, shadowy and tall as can be. He lurks in the corners of every room, a dark presence that brings only doom. I thought I was going mad, but others have seen this shadowy figure that I can't unsee. He haunts me at night. In my room he appears, watching me closely, feeding on my fears. I've tried to run, I've tried to hide, but the hat man always stands close by my side. He whispers in my ear, his voice so low, telling me things that I don't want to know. I've tried to ignore his visceral stare, but he's always there, with his hat and his glare. He watches me closely, 
as if waiting for my demise, a malevolent presence that I cannot disguise. Now I'm grown, but the hat man remains, still standing in corners, his presence causes pain. I've learned to live with him though, I cannot escape, the shadowy figure that my mind cannot shake. And now, back to the Paranormal Guys podcast. It is. It's very terrifying for a lot of people. So what I want to do is I want to show you guys to put everything on your phone. I want to go to that first picture at the top left. This picture here was taken at Archer Woods Cemetery over near Justice, Illinois. Um, it's about 83rd and Keene Avenue. Now, these pictures I'm going to show you is from last uh, October's uh our Halloween tours that we do, because we do tours throughout the Chicagoland area. It's a four and a half hour tour that we take you on to real destinations. And it's you, the customers, that actually majority of the time are able to get me these photos. Right after people take the photos, they go, Neil or Steve, they go, here, look at this. So the photos I'm going to show you are right after the fact, because I always ask people to right away, please show me, so I don't have somebody playing around on There's no doctoring like of the photo. No doctoring. Right. So this first photo here, the story of Archer Wood Cemetery is a story of about a crying little girl, well, crying lady, not a little girl, a wailing lady that is either crying for a lost love or she's crying for a lost child. But nonetheless, when we were doing this, and I told Steve, when we were doing this tour last year, when I had the crowd in front of me and I was looking more towards the tree area, I actually saw this thing. But I don't want to spook everybody and freak everybody out because then they'd be running all over the damn place in the middle of the dark. Right. So <laughs> Tripping over headstones. Tripping over headstones. Neil's insurance just went up. Holy <laughs> crap. That so would be bad. Yeah, it's real bad. So then- what happened was that I'm seeing this thing, and it's going around the tree, and it's going from tree to tree. And I'm like, oh, my God, what is this thing today? But that's just in the back of my mind. I'm not saying anything to anybody. So people are taking photos, and as you can see in this photo here, they, it looks like it's exiting the gates. And what the part of the legend is is that this girl, this lady, is around the gate area of Archer Woods Cemetery. So then all of a sudden this shadow person shows up. What would you say about that, Bob? That's a great image. Uh, sometimes when you look at like evidence photos of, you know, quote, shadow people, you're like, oh, well, that's totally an after image, right? Somebody was there. The exposure went off. They walked away and they left that blur behind. Mm. I That's pretty cool, man. It's you can even like, I don't know if I'm major seeing it, but I could totally see the facial features. I could see a nose coming out from the side there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's almost as if the head is turned you know that to the turn in front of them versus facing you which is pretty interesting right i i find that i find that really cool because it's not like the tree could cast a shadow no like it's not you see and when we go out there it's pitch black uh so let's go to the next photo you're gonna go up and that same area this is the same area you see the form of the legs and the lower torso and almost a little bit of the upper torso near the bus that we utilize does everybody see that yes okay so we had that there. Once again, that was from another customer. So one customer took the picture of the first photo that you saw, and then another customer took a second photo of this. Mm -hmm. And this was all on the same day. Right. Right. So that's a very interesting one because you could totally see the legs and the feet, which is very interesting. Then our third photo was taken and taken and once again given to us where you have this here where it looks like someone's walking back into the cemetery area. And I can see that thing wearing a coat and jeans, though, Neil. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. Well, well I mean, that one's a tough one. It, once again, everybody everybody uh, can choose, you know, if you believe sure, or not. No, but the first one you got me on. I'll, I'll give you that. The second <laughs> one's pretty interesting, too. All right. Again, these are given to us right away. These are so. given to us right away, and sure. there was nobody back over in that area. Because no, what I, I do is you. I exit everybody out. Yeah, no, okay. that's it's good. It's a good photo. All right. So then the next one. Now, we were on MSN News, uh, the wailing uh, girl of, uh, of Archer Woods Cemetery we talked about, and we caught this photo that actually looks like a face peeking out Absolutely from- Absolutely not, man. <laughs> that thing's terrifying. <laughs> oh, you, there, yeah. You, you see that face? Up your, bringing up your messenger there, Neil. All right. Sorry. 
So then that that face there was brought up, and we were brought on there. This Archer Woods Cemetery. Me and Steve are going to take a deeper dive into the place when it gets warmer. Yeah, please. that place is it's it's weird. Man. I'm not sitting out in the cold. Yeah, we're not sitting on the cold. We're not sitting on the cold. <laughs> What's your Chicago spirit, guys? Can go oh, outside. then join us, Bob. Yeah, I'd love to. <laughs> oh. You know, I'm just very busy. Things come up, you know, but I'll, I'll catch you guys in, in like spirit. a month. I'll be there in spirit, in and I'll spirit. see you guys in a couple yeah. months. It'll yeah. be uh, summer then, yes. I'll see yeah, it'll summer. be summer then. <laughs> then dealing with hey, mosquitoes. I can show up now, Neil. No, no problem. No problem, man. No Those, problem. But then there's mosquito things. I'll catch you in the fall. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> now, the next photo here as you can see, was taken at the Cook County Jail. This was taken in this old psych ward of Cook County Jail. This was uh, sent to me uh, by a supervisor from there that knows what I do. As you can see, now I can tell you, because I used to work in that area for years uh, dealing with psych criminals. So over in that area there, there was officers as well as inmates who used to say that they saw something going on, a thing called Charlie Four. That was a wing where they would go back and forth and back and forth. For whatever reason, I don't know if you've ever noticed this or anybody else ever noticed this, if you've seen shadow people, that they go back and forth. And I don't know why that is. You rarely ever see them move forward. But for whatever reason, they can move left or right. Time loop. Uh, time loop? I don't yeah. know. Maybe you're right. Time time loop, time skip. That's my flaw. That's my Maybe theory. you're right. Yeah. Oh, like, like based off of residual haunting. Exactly. So residual haunting, if there's either something blocking the energy from A to B, right? So let's say above them above in the ceiling tile, let's say there's a, some lead or mm. some iron, whatever it might be. I, I'm not a con, you know, a person that builds things, but I'm just going to take a very wild assumption from playing with Legos as a kid. Um, <laughs> you know, there might be a lead pipe up there or something that's blocking that from A to B, right? Mm -hmm. um, or some, you know, could be anything, even a water, water main. So if it's skipping from A to B, there's something stopping it, or maybe it's just not powerful enough. You know, to move. I, I never even thought about that. You just said that. that I, that's, I'm a, that's, well, that's, some well, you good. Some buildings yeah. get remodeled, right? Right. And so when, if it was a uh, deceased entity and there was a wall up, during the time it was alive, right, right, right. there might be a psychological barrier. A hundred percent. There you go. Now you're thinking with bricks. Good job, Steve. <laughs> thinking of bricks. Good job, Steve. Good job, St Steve. You're you're the guy. All right, Thanks. you're the man. Tell your friends. Tell your neighbors. <laughs> the next. Two All right. So the next photo that we're going to show you guys, ladies oh, and gentlemen. By the way, I just want to mention go ahead. that, that uh, Cook County photo. Yes, looked a lot like what was captured in front of the bus. Yeah. The, the legs. Yes. That's kind of creepy. Yeah. 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 So that that was sent to me, I think, like five years ago. That photo there was sent to me about five I, years ago. Side note, I can't imagine the stuff that, like, the late night, like, janitorial crew or something sees, you know? Mm -hmm. Because, man, you can imagine, like, the energy that's kicking around that joint at a 24-hour basis because there's nonsense that happens. In so actually, because like I... I, I I'm going on my 30th year. I'm going to be retiring very soon. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. That's what Danny Glover said. And <laughs> that's what Danny Glover said. <laughs> so weapon. one of the things is, is that Cook County Jail is actually one of the most haunted places, I can tell you, because I go there on a daily basis. And people have seen shadow people because those places are based off of negative energy. A lot of negative energy because you have a lot of people who are inside places like this who just breathe like that. They just breathe negative energy. So it becomes a very downplayed place. And all of a sudden, these things start taking manifestation. We've seen it. I've seen it on cameras going from one cell to another. Now, they're not recorded, but I see late at night. We've had actually a story where uh, me and a guy were doing the intake. And as we were doing the intake, we felt like this person walking through us. And we were both like, holy, what was that? That place there is actually a very, very, because of negative energy, at least that's what I believe. When, when, you, when you produce a lot of negative energy like that, what are you going to get? You're going to get negative energy. That's yeah. why you're going to see things like shadow people all the time in places like that. And plus, like you said, residual, because there's actually, when in places like that, there's a lot of suicides that do happen sure. in jail settings. So moving on to the next. This photo here is a very interesting photo. This was sent to me by a man who goes to a place called Chet Smelly Lounge. Anybody ever heard of Chet Smelly Lounge? Come on, man. That's like the most famous haunted bar in Chicago. I know, right? Yeah, I know, right? I know, right? Resurrection Mary lives That's there. Right. Yeah, yeah, she, she lives she, there. Yeah. Every Sometimes Sunday. I see her as a bartender. <laughs> <laughs> every Sunday you can go there and they put the drink up for her. Uh -huh. Every right, Sunday, right. man. Bloody Mary. Yeah. So, yeah, the Bloody Mary. So in this photo here, you're going to see I circled, and you can, you can zoom in, where there's a shadow in the back. 
okay, way in the back, in the back corner area. In that corner area, there's a story of a guy by the name of Ben back in the pioneer days who started a fire to keep himself warm off the old uh, trail of Archer, uh, Archer uh, Avenue, which was not called uh, Archer Avenue at the time. It was just an old trail. And this trail, he started a fire and he, he supposedly died. And the, th- the story goes, the folklore story goes, Bob, that parts of the wood that were part of that were put into the building of Chet's Million Lounge as part of the foundation, which is causing some kind of pool for this individual. So people believe that this shadow person that we're seeing, because we've actually made contact and we've got the name Ben at these places, mm-hmm. where this shadow person could possibly be Ben. It could definitely be Ben. Yeah. So after that, I want you to go up one more. So this is, <laughs> once again, at Chet's Melody Lounge. This is at Chet's Melody Lounge during one of our tours that we do. This was during a daytime tour. Now, this picture here, this was actually presented to me about right at, once again, once after the uh, thing. It does look odd, and it does. It really does. But when you go ahead, click on that one, and zoom in. This is in the same area as that last photo, the same exact area. Now, it kind of looks like if somebody was using a marker or something like that. Yeah, 100%. Right? It looks like someone's using a marker. Mm -hmm. But once again, this was given to me after the fact, okay? Now, I'm not a photographer. Steve's not a photographer. So I really don't know sometimes, but it's really odd. When you look at it, you see two little white dots over where would probably be the facial area. Yeah, hundred percent, man. And that thing's standing right in front of me. I'm and that's in the same exact spot. Yeah, as the one that you saw prior to that. It's almost like it's wearing a mask. And Steve, no, Steve was putting together putting together the Anna yeah, box. box. So there's a table right in front of me, up top. And um, yeah, it's wild. And so then this this uh, kind of showed up in her picture, and we're like, what? And then look at those hands. Yeah. Well, what I, is that? I I don't really even know what that is. I think it's a panoramic. So. <laughs> I couldn't really tell you what that is. I, I, I really don't know. Like what they were. They but that was in the, in the exact same area this shadow person was yeah. supposedly in the same area. So the next photo. I didn't sleep that night. No, <laughs> I didn't sleep that night. Now, the next photo that I'm going to show you, though, I had to throw this one in. Who's seen the movie The Conjuring? Or you've seen The Nun and this and that, right? So this photo here was taken at a place called Holy Sepulchre Cemetery. We were talking about the Grime Sisters murders. I don't know who's familiar with that. And like I tell a lot of the customers, take pictures, take pictures all day long. And this lady, she gets on the bus and on our daily, on our daytime ones are usually older people. Okay. She goes, Neil, what, what do you think this is? I didn't see this person here. Now I want you to zoom in. I'm sorry, but that looks like the nun from the conjuring, man. Yes. I'm like, what the hell is that thing? So if you flip up one, I got a better picture of it where I zoomed in more. It almost looks like the skin is gray. Yes. And that lady was not there. I mean, you would notice. You could see the head, you notice yeah. that. You could see the headdress. That's too, what I'm saying. You yeah. would have known that, that. I mean, that person would have been, you know, outstanding. Nuns right don't there. dress that way anymore. No. Nuns don't dress like that anymore. No. How do they dress? They don't dress that way How anymore. they dress anymore? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they dress different. Oh, they do? Oh, okay. Not the ones I, I've seen. <laughs> not the ones that he's seen. <laughs> Online. So, <laughs> oh, man, oh, Steve. Lord. Just kidding. Whatever you do, Steve, keep yourself, keep young your, man. Uh, this is a all-family-friendly environment, sir. I'm Catholic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what I want to do is I want to ask a little interaction from some people here. Is Who is actually probably think that they've seen a shadow person before? There's a couple. Who, where are you at? Do I have to raise my hand? You have to. Well, if you just told me your story. Oh, I just I know, but you're asking me to do I have to raise my hand? Other than Bob. Okay. Other than yeah, Bob. I, don't, I don't want to tell my story. All right, kids right. in the classroom. <laughs> <laughs> Did you bring some for the rest of the class? Did you? No. Oh. <laughs> Does anybody else ever think that they've seen a shadow person or anything like that? Yes? Okay, come on over here for a moment. <laughs> Can we do it? Yeah, I don't care. All right. Here, I'll I'll give them the microphone. Please. You're, you're gonna deal with some feedback, but eh. there you go. All right. Hi there, person. Hi, how are you? What's your name, young lady? My name's Emily. Hey, Hi, Emily. Emily. So tell us your story. So um, we moved to a relatively new house about three or four years ago. And my dad was sick at the time, so that makes me wonder some things. He had his room down the hallway, and I was in the living room sitting facing the kitchen. And out of the corner of my eye, I saw 
exactly what you would describe as a typical hat man, probably six feet tall, big right. hat, like almost a cape behind him. Mm-hmm. And he just ran like towards the kitchen. And I'm thinking, okay, that's my dad going to the kitchen. Mm-hmm. So I went into the kitchen like five minutes later to ask him something and mm-hmm. he's not in there. And I go down the hallway, he's out asleep. Okay. So then, like, maybe two or three days later after that, I went out somewhere. My dad was somewhere else. And my mom is sitting in the kitchen table, or at the kitchen table. (laughs) And I found out the next day that she says, well, you guys were gone, and I'm facing, facing the hallway. And I saw a man come around the corner with a hat on. Right. And it was like... I felt everything mm-hmm. like, just freeze for a I second. I think you're getting just, goosebumps right now thinking yeah, about it. Yes, you it are. Was, it's not something you forget, and it's not like... Oh, yeah. You, when you see something like that, yeah, it's like, what in the hell? And it makes you wonder, like, mm-hmm. what's going on in my head that I saw this? But to have her relay that same exact experience with the same exact looking figure, not more than a couple days later, mm-hmm. it was very strange. And... Like I was, it was four o'clock in the afternoon, and probably three or four for her too. Oh, cool! So it never, it was. I wasn't asleep or anything. I was just like Bob was talking about. Just it doesn't out have and... to be at sleep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. What's your name? Emily. Emily. Emily, thank you very much. Mm-hmm. I do appreciate thank that. You. Let's hear it up for Emily. Now, one of the reasons why I do what I do, uh, ask people to come up here, is because, and I explain it on the bus when we do a lot of our tours, is there's a lot of people out there that want to talk about their stories. Sometimes people believe that. They're going to sound crazy. So they don't want to tell other people what's going on because mm-hmm. they don't want to be thought of as the oddball or the nutball or whatever like that. That's why I always do something like that. Whereas you take your time and you go ahead and you talk about it. I actually I think it's important for people to talk about these things that happen in their lives. So th- thank you once again, Emily. Is there anyone else who wants to share a, a story with us? Is this like uh, Hatman Anonymous? This is Hatman Anonymous. Tonight? 1-800. <laughs> Wait, yeah. Andrew, call Neil. Call Neil. Call Neil. Call Neil. My, uh, better call Neil <laughs> instead. Of better call Saul. Better call right. Saul. Better call Neil. Yeah. One of our listeners, um, uh, <laughs> you may know her as Mrs. Len Weber. My mom yeah. sees shadow people all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, one time she was watching TV with my dad, and there's like an empty rocker, and they both looked up and saw the hat man. Oh, really? Yeah. It was, it was creepy because my dad wouldn't. He's a skeptic, but he saw it. Cool. He doesn't talk about it anymore. <laughs> All right, so let's get back to the original stories that we told. Who believes that Bob is the Mothman? Give me a hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. You guys. Now, if <laughs> if Steve's story is real, give me a okay. Okay. What? Hell I yeah. Got you, Steve. Who believes Bob's the Mothman? I... Hell yeah. <laughs> Bob's the Mothman. I think that's true, Bob. You're stuck with it, buddy. I have forever and always... <laughs> Just like paranormal podcasting, <laughs> you'll yep. never. You're just it, it, paranormal. You don't it go looking canon. for the paranormal. Yeah, it becomes canon. You don't look for the paranormal. The paranormal comes and finds you. And That's you're very, stu- very, you're very stuck true. in that life forever <laughs> and ever. Right, Steve. You got anything for us before we uh, head on out? No, but how do you? Keep, what do you do if you uh, if you see a hat man? For people who experience that, one eight hundred call Neil. Call Neil. Call Neil. Neil. And Let's you talk have, about it, baby. <laughs> so talk about it. Is, Let's uh, talk about yeah, it. Right. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, guaranteed. So we do have uh, emails. If you guys want to send any of our emails, any questions or anything like that, to our podcast, it's Neil, N-E-A-L, at gravesideparanormal.com. I'll come around with some stickers in a little while. You can also go to our uh, website, gravesideparanormal.com, where we have the paranormal guys. We'll have the paranormal guys up there. You can go and look at all the things that we do on the paranormal guys on YouTube off of gravesideparanormal.com. We usually have a lot of music that goes on, but we weren't able to put that in. But so we're going to yeah, yeah. so I'm actually recording yeah. it on a video. So we're recording it right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit it in. So make sure you go there. Uh, we're going to have it out about three weeks, mm-hmm. and we'll have it out there so you guys Excellent. can see what you have. So, Steve, you got anything to say before we leave? Uh, boo. <laughs> Bobby, got anything to say? Stay spooky, everybody. Stay spooky. And as always, yeah. boys and girls, boo. boo. Bye. <laughs> Folks, give it up to the paranormal guys. All right. So we got.